So today we have this beautiful 2018 Subaru STI. For the review and for the drive, we are in a special place. We are at the special time of the day it's early in the morning and we woke up at 5 a.m even a little bit before and this car it's not only the subaru it's not just the turbo subaru wrx it is a sti it is an icon it is a legend and it is a lifestyle for the people who love this car as much as i do and i can tell you a lot about it because again i had a lot of experience and i'm still doing some experience in my life by buying that car driving it myself showing it to you and probably i'm going to sell it to someone who do appreciate this car a lot and who's willing to pay same money right now as someone paid five years ago for the brand new subaru sti that's crazy but that's the market uh for this car and it's always be like that and it's going to be even tougher i think later on just because they discontinued there is no more sti on the market the new one you can buy wrx and because of some specifications on uh emission control system or whatever they say that's it we're not gonna produce any more sti you're gonna stuck with wrx but we're gonna do the saltis whatever the electric uh toyota subaru uh made and they're gonna do double uh, they i mean they're gonna do saltis STI I don't know what it's gonna be but it's gonna be electric STI Toyota with Subaru Beige so it's not the same so it is always for me super emotional when I'm getting in this car even if somebody buying it and giving me to drive just a little bit but I know how the Subaru is super sensitive even you get in the brand new Subaru and you're gonna have 3,000 miles on it uh, your engine might gonna tell you you know knock knock uh, open the door we're ready to go out so your parts from the engine might gonna fall apart you might gonna hear some uh, any kind of knocking noise and the people who drive Subaru right now who drove it before they understand what I'm talking about so if somebody offered me to drive the Subaru and the Subaru not under factory warranty I wouldn't take it I wouldn't drive it because it's super scary and super sketchy so you might gonna get in trouble by driving someone's Subaru that's why the people who own Subaru and driving it, especially STI, they're not going to let you drive it because the engine, they want to kill themselves. They don't want you to kill the engine for them. That's just a part of the life. Like I say, it is a lifestyle. There is a huge, uh, there's a huge selection of parts you can buy. But thanks God, somehow I got this car uh, almost fully bone stock. Uh, what it has right now on it, it's a Borla exhaust system and there is some some modification pattern they did and they put the oil catcher which is super cool i mean i do like it so the main part what i don't like about this car and all the subarus that's the way you're gonna launch it so basically even if it's cti like this one it has 305 horsepower maybe they add a little bit more maybe cheap whatever 400 but again just at the beginning when you're trying to launch the car it's not gonna go the way you think it's gonna go so you have to work a little bit on it but as soon as you launch it that's it you've just flying and the Subaru gonna give you all the ability to do so besides that it's gonna give you so much emotions sometimes you cannot even handle it and especially if you're gonna drive in the place like we are right now and we're gonna drive a little bit and probably we might gonna show you how you can drive it uh and what you can do on this car it's kind of scaring me it's probably gonna scare you also and uh if you never crash one subaru but you're still a subaru fan who's pretending to buy only subaru and uh, to keep going the whole life you're probably gonna crash one because in my lifetime i crashed several subarus wrx and sti and i know how it is so it just like i say again it's a lifestyle 
So we have a 2018 WRX STI, which is, I'm going to say just STI, no WRX. What it's kind of different from 2016 and all other years, whatever. So 2018 up to 2021, those model year, they got some upgrades. So it's a little bit different from 2016, 2017. It's kind of the same body, yes, but it got new brake clippers, different color. And they say it's improved uh, Brembo, which is the same as it before, but it's kind of improved and it got new color of it. So the wheels on this car, they start doing it in 2018. By 2021, they changed the style of it a little bit, but the bumpers, the doors and the spoiler, whatever it's in the car right now, it's about the same what you're going to get if you're going to buy 2021. Uh, the sum of the parts of the interior, they've been changed in 2018. Same as the screen, the central screen, they changed it, they made it a little bit bigger. And the one for the Turbo Boost and for some uh, additional information of the car, in the middle, on the top, they changed it a little bit, they expanded. So most of the time you're going to see the Subaru driving on the street, WRX or STI, it's simply made, I mean, it's made nice from the beginning, from the factory, but the people who's buying it, they're not doing a lot of crazy stuff on the car. Like they're not changing the rims, they're not putting Chinese sometimes, but it's super rare. So basically this car came from the factory the way it's supposed to be. And that's the way the people keeping it. Even if you're going to pay attention here, I'm going to show you later how they put exhaust and how they add something on the rear spoiler. Just it's not going to bump. It's not going to make noise uh, when you're driving it fast. Uh, that's super cool. It's kind of from the side you might not gonna notice it is it like the factory one or it's somebody added so basically people appreciate those engineers whoever made this car and the design they made it and they want to keep it original because the original especially for this one same as uh, any other icon cars you have to keep it original so the car gonna bring value more over the years even if you're gonna take the bumpers apart do the intercooler on the front some other crazy stuff whatever yeah if you're making this car as a racing and you're gonna crush it later on or you're gonna do use it for racing or for rally yes but if you buy this car to drive it on the city which is like in my opinion kind of super hard because not so many people drive manual stick shift second one it's always traffic in la and you're going bumper to bumper on the car you always changing the gears going here and there so your clutch gonna go out so your clutch gonna go out you have to pay some money to replace the clutch but from my experience from my uh lifetime period i would say there is not so many people who's buying that car and they still have a lot of money in the bank account so they can keep going and replacing the clutch uh every like half year or one year so that's why those people they're going like either at night or any car meets closer tonight just because there is less traffic and they can meet the same people who's on the same wave who's buying the same cars and they just love it they love that sound of the engine that's a boxer engine opposite engine horizontal four cylinder engine you can name it there is a lot of names for that but it's perfectly made and what i do love a lot about sti this car from the factory it made the way you can drive it on the street every day as a daily car and same time you can take it off-road not like off-road completely off but for some kind of rally trucks maybe and drive it super fast the, so the suspension your transmission and engine they all ready right now to go off-road and drive it maybe together with rally cars not the way they do in it but again if you're going to lift it up a little bit take the bumpers off you're going to jump here and there so this car is ready to do so and it gives you again so much emotions sometimes you just cannot handle it because this car can do more what i can for example because when you're driving it super fast you try to turn the steering wheel to go left or right on a high speed this car can do it but sometimes you cannot do it you just cannot handle it because the ability of the car it just scares you so much so you just release the gas and sometimes i'm going to big bear during the winter time and i see how the people driving the subaru who never drove the subaru before or they might drive in a period of time but they have no idea how to handle it now i'm not talking about wrx -SC. i'm talking just about regular subaru all-wheel drive asymmetric so if you if you like the subaru if you bought one or you want to buy one i would say do some research about it because 
you have to know exactly what you're buying and why you buy it. So like you buy it for what reason? Because you want to be part of the community, you want to be part of the lifestyle or just to have an icon in your garage. Uh, if you never owned the Subaru before or you buy it for fun just to drive it a little bit here, drive a little bit there, you know, show up. So the people are going to cheer you and you're going to do this to other Subaru guys and, uh, you know, you're all going to be happy. If you do it for that and for daily driving, you have to be careful. Because, like I say, the maintenance for the STI is a little bit more expensive than the regular Subaru, plus the cost of the clutch and the engine. There is kind of a lot, so I'm going to tell you at the end how much it's going to cost to replace the engine and where you can buy it if you need one. But as a part of the maintenance, Subaru, it's a famous car, the engine, I'm going to go as a part. So it's more expensive to build this engine to fix it something on it if you have to take it apart build it and put it back together it's going to cost you more than you're going to buy the used engine with warranty put it on the car drive it a little bit and sell it because after your engine going to fall apart you're going to be scared of the cost for replacing this engine or fixing it so you might not going to keep this car until next time when the engine going to go apart so you're just going to replace the engine and sell it to the next guy uh, who's gonna do the same so from my lifetime experience I can tell you this I had so many Subarus since I would say all generations of the STI all generations of the Impreza bodies and all kind of stuff from Japan not from Japan from uh, from Cyprus so that Cyprus Subaru used to be front wheel drive which is super rare you probably cannot find it I mean later on they start doing it but that legacy was 1995 Subaru from Cyprus with front wheel drive that was super crazy so I had a lot of Subarus and I think the huge mistake Subaru did when they got sold they sold themselves not them but they got sold to the Chevy to GM back in 2007 whatever so what they did wrong they did the frames on the door and in my opinion the last year of real Subaru back in 2006 the Fox one, it was the best year and the best Subaru STI was made. And after that, when the car became GM, uh, they kind of left the same powertrain and all kinds of technology and idea of the car, same, but the body got designed by GM. And those doors, they just, in my opinion, ugly. But again, it's a STI, it's a blue color, that's what's supposed to be triple five the people who knows they know if not you can google it it's a long story to tell like i say i can keep telling you story about the subarus all day long and you're never gonna stop me so the design of this particular car i do like it and i do like it because there is nothing else you can compare to this car for example a lot of people love the mitsubishi evolution which is legend also but I do love the Subaru and I love it so much so I do like the design of this car just because of a lot of details which is telling me that's the STI if I'm gonna take the same body style but just a regular Impreza I'm not gonna like it I'm just not gonna do any review on that because it's just a boring car with CVT transmission or maybe manual transmission it's not an STI so when you buy an STI you buy the fenders you buy all the rocker panels, you buy the wheels, you buy the brakes, you buy the front bumper. That's what you buy. You're not buying Impreza like the people say, saying who never drove the Subaru. Oh, that's the same Impreza. No, it's not. It's completely not. So, but besides that, you buy the engine. It's a famous legendary engine 2.5 turbo with twin scroll turbo. So they never change it like completely. They never went away from it so it was always 2.5 twin scroll turbo for the STI powertrain but this car as a previous one they got uh, the differential which is a adjustable differential so you can adjust the, the torque on it like again the Subaru before it used to be this kind of same uh, style of differential but a little bit different uh, rear limited slip differential it's always been there and uh, in Japan they made it, there is a huge story about it, huge history 
of the rear uh, differential on the Subaru. You can Google it and check it yourself. It's super nice. I love it. It just uh, it just taking uh, taking your life. I mean, taking piece of your life, piece of your heart. And even if you're gonna buy this car, drive it for a while and sell it to someone, you're gonna keep this car in your memory forever. Believe me or not, if you do have the money to buy the Subaru STI and drive it, you know how to drive the STI uh, manual transmission. For sure buy it, it's for sure worth all the money, whatever people asking, just do the good inspection for it and enjoy it. So the Subaru, I would say it's like the Lego. So when you buy the car, like, you know, the Lego, you buy the toy and you can buy some other toys to add it to the whole picture of whatever you're trying to assemble. So that's the same as a Subaru. When you buy the STI and you still have a lot of money on your bank account, you still want to spend some money on something, whatever you don't need it, but you want it, there is a lot of opportunity to do so. It just depends how much money you have in your bank account. There is a lot of different things you can edit for the engine. You can increase your horsepower. There is a lot of stuff you can do for your transmission and differential. Even you can do some people doing that. You can do real wheel drive and this car is going to become super nice uh, drifting, drifting racing car. Or you can buy some other stuff, just put it on the car outside like the people whoever owned this car before they made it and it's kind of cool and you just drive it uh, every day without drifting, without racing, without revving the engine. It's all up to you. So what I was going to say about the quality of the car itself. This is 2018 and the way they made it, it's really cool. I mean, it's much better in my opinion than new Tesla or Mercedes and you know why. So, but again, I can see a lot of touches from the Chevy, from the GM. For example, the scoop, it used to be different kind of scoop. It used to be much bigger and when it used to be STI, like I used to have 2006, 2005, the scoop was so big, you can even buy the other one and put it on. Here you cannot do so because the hood giving you limitation for your scoop. But about the GM touch, I would say the plastic, whatever they're using for the scoop, the paint on it already peeling off. So, and I can see that often on a newer GM, on the old Chevys, the paint just in California peeling off everywhere. Even sometimes I'm getting 2021. 20, 2020 Chevy, the paint just almost gone. So the Subaru has kind of the same marks. So the quality of 2018, the plastic, all aluminum parts, the hood, uh, they made good. I mean, it's not super durable, but again, as I can tell, as I can see the bumper, I never done it before. I never crushed the bumper yet, but it's kind of durable. I mean, the plastic is so solid, but same time, it's kind of a little bit soft. So it's going to give you that ability. If you're going to jump over uh, the curb, nothing going to happen with your suspension. And it looks like there is nothing going to happen with your bumper. Because usually, on, especially on a newer car, if you're going to push the bumper, you're going to like jump or just push it to the curb. All your plastic stuff on the side, your covers, they're all going to go out. Not on the Subaru. Subaru, it's made good. So what's going on under the hood? Like I say, it's 2.5. It's an old engine. Yes, they did a lot of modification it over the years. They've been changing this. They've been changing that. But besides that, so the people who's buying it and like I say, who, who has money, who still has some money after they bought the car, uh, they have a lot of options to do a lot of modifications. And like here, besides the parent, those kind of covers, flesh is super nice. Uh, color of brake calipers, they put it here. There is nothing, there is nothing to do with the engine performance, but what they done, they put oil catcher on this engine, which is kind of cool. So the engine not gonna spill a lot of oil into the intake. So it's not gonna smoke a lot and some other stuff. Again, I'm not a technical advisor for those, but they made it, they put it on and I can feel it. It makes a difference. What about the intercooler? There's a lot of times when you can see the people doing crazy intercooler on the front and they're doing huge different color pipes to put it on here, there, you know, just like pretending it's going to be more fresh air going in and your turbo going to suck more air. It gives you more performance. I mean, at some point, yes, 
but if you buy that super cheap somewhere and uh, most of the parts you buy it's chinese bad quality cheap quality because again you bought expensive cars now you can buy cheaper parts it's not gonna work for this car believe me or not it's not gonna work what else they missing right now not right now what else they missing on 2018 subaru what 2006 subaru used to have that's the water sprayer so basically before it used to be water tank in the trunk compartment where you can put some water and you used to have a button to push it and it's going to spray water on the intercooler so it's going to give you more cold air and your turbo going to give you more performance that was a really useful uh, part of the STI which they illuminated for some reason and I think a lot of people adding it if I would keep this car and do it as a daily driving for sure I would do it for sure because your turbo gonna cool down significantly and you're gonna get much more performance and you're gonna feel it right away it was a super cool option it's not exist anymore on those cars till 2021 but again right now we're talking about legend which is not exist anymore so basically sti brand it's gonna keep going on electric car on electric toyota subaru slash whatever they make in it right now they already made it but it's a part of the history of the subaru and the sti turbo engine it's not gonna exist anymore on the market in the us maybe in japan hopefully maybe somewhere else but not here so I would say bye-bye to the brand new STI turbo engine and I would say welcome new prices for the older STI because it's going to be huge demand uh, on those cars. So what about the engine? I was going to say a little bit more because again it's a 2018 and most of Subarus in 2018 even 2.0 they got chains. They got covered chains. So timing chains I mean. Uh, and the engine is completely different but if you're going to check it out here it still has a belt which means you have to do it every 30 40 thousand miles replacing it by the super expensive red one and put the rollers and all kind of stuff but i think they made it for purpose because that engine was super good even the red intake uh which is following from back in the days back from 2002 they still they've been doing the same because there is nothing else to improve it was already max from this engine and it was super good and i believe it's really good engine i do like it so if you want to buy this car and use it as a family car uh you might gonna be disappointed because it's not enough space uh inside this car to keep all the family plus they probably gonna be through up uh after you drive it a little bit even on the streets so i still have the my kid seats on the back it's only one my second one in another car i'm gonna put it on because my kids they kind of crazy about all the cars whatever i'm buying whatever i have right now in my inventory and they're driving in any car whatever i'm coming pick them up from the school or from the daycare so it's okay for me it's okay for them but if you want to buy this car and use it as a one car for the family don't buy it if you want to buy this car and keep it as a second for yourself for the weekends for the nights you know to go out with the your friends just drive to the ocean or drive somewhere you never been before buy it for sure so the space for the driver it's more than enough so for the driver like my size i'm feeling myself really comfortable it could be that feeling i'm feeling myself really comfortable not because it's super comfy inside it's just because it's a super car for me even if it's not costing the same money as a mclaren i used to have but still i mean it is a super it's like a super nice toy and uh for me that's a huge emotional up not down never been down since day one first time back in the days i got the first subaru turbo and i was so crazy about it which i'm still going right now and if I'm going to compare with any supercar, whatever I drove before or whatever I owned before, uh, I would say Subaru is the best. And some people who I do know, they drive in different supercars right now. One of the guy, I know him for fact, uh, he's still driving GTR, Nissan, he loves it so much. But um, 
the car STI, he loved it and he would jump on it. But just because he's a different kind of level guy, so he needs to drive something more expensive. And a couple other guys who drive a Lamborghini and McLaren 720, they have those cars, but they always driven to buy this car again and keep driving it. But just because they're on that level where they have a Lamborghini, they cannot go back to the Subaru. But it's kind of sucks. I mean, it's not you. That's the people around you telling you what to do. So I would say do what you want to do and buy the Subaru for yourself to enjoy it and maybe to change your life. So what I was going to say, something about prices for the car, for the maintenance of the Subaru STI, if you're going to get one. For example, the main one the people scared about, that's the engine. So the engine on the market right now, on the parts market, you can buy it between 5500 up to 8500 That's going to be cost of the engine itself. With warranty, you might going to get 30 days warranty from the junkyard. Plus installation, you're going to spend about between 600 and 1000 to install it. So if you're going to buy a low mileage engine with fully warranty, whatever they can give it to you, so you're probably going to spend 10000 So the car itself right now, this car has 60,000 miles and it's 2018 STI. It costs about $33,000, $34,000 for the used one, 2018. So back in 2018, the new one, the price starting, it was $34,900, I think. So that's crazy. I mean, after five years and 60,000 miles, this car worth exactly the same, whatever it used to be, uh, five years ago. And believe me or not, after five years from now, this car not going to depreciate. It's probably going to appreciate more. And the cost of those cars is going to be going up and up. Just because Subaru announced there is no more STI going to be available as a brand new. So the part for your clutch, the clutch replacement together with parts is going to cost you about $1,500. If you're going to put decent one, not the super, super stage two, three, whatever. Not the used one. Some people do that. They're buying from the junkyard. They just put in used one just to keep going in the Subaru. Uh, like BMW. All BMW owners, they're exactly doing the same. Brake parts as a Brembo. I mean, they're not so expensive. The brake rotors, I mean, they're constantly uh, going bad, especially if you live in somewhere with the rain or snow and you stop in your car at from the high speed during the rain or you're going through the water. So your brakes are going to be gone. So first of all, the rotors and the brake parts itself. So the rotors, it's about 300 and the brakes about 80 bucks for the brake parts. The rear one, they're a little bit cheaper. So the tires, it's a 19 inch tires. This one has a good one, not the Chinese one. It, it has a Kumho, which is a Korean brand. I think it's about 250 piece to do so. And there is nothing else you need to do. The oil change about 120. The cooling change you have to do every 50,000 miles. And believe me, Subaru, that kind of car, you have to go by specifications, whatever. It's on your manual. So if the manual saying you have to do the uh, coolant replacement every 50,000, please do so because it's going to save you a lot of money in the future. So there is a guy on the back. He's trying uh, he's trying to buy the Subaru like we have and I told him the secret of that you probably have to go around and get some some bottles and you know make some money so that's what he's doing that's really good uh, the guy is dreaming you know and he's chasing his dream <laughs> So while you're driving the Subaru, especially STI, especially on the Canyon area, I mean, you feel it right away why you pay that much money for the car, which is just four cylinder and there is nothing inside. I mean, the Subaru always was making the cars. Uh, it's simple. It's just really, really simple. There is no luxury inside. There is just a steering wheel, which is cut on the bottom and it's super comfortable. But again, like I said before, when you turn the wheel on the canyon and car just goes and you might scare a little bit to step on the gas but you have to push more to just get out and that's amazing that's amazing car used to make and uh it's just a huge emotion there is nothing else just pure natural manual six speed 
transmission with beautiful engine sound. You're gonna hear it from the Borla uh, exhaust system. And it's a pure joy. It is a pure joy of the car and uh, save the manual guys. If you don't know how to drive it, please do so. Please find the car, find the friend who has their old manual car, maybe Toyota, maybe Nissan, whatever it is. Just try to drive it, try to learn it. Because as what I see right now, over the years, those cars, they're not going to be exist pretty much soon. And it's always special order if you want to get one uh, as a new. So it's only automatic transmission, which is super boring and you're not working at all. You're just driving it. But on this car, it's going to give you time so you can work it out. How to use it, how to drive it, how to change the gears before you're going up, how to change the gears when you're going down, and when you're doing it on the freeway, and on and on and on. So what are you getting here? I mean, like I say, the engine, it's a simple old engine, 2.5 on the belt, not on the chain. There is a six-speed manual transmission, which is kind of old. So they did some modification, some ratio adjustment. But again, it's a six-speed and the reverse is the same as an old one. You have to lift it up and push it back. The differential, I'm not playing with that. I'm honestly keeping it on auto because I like it in the middle. I don't like it in the back. I don't like it on the front. I like it in the middle. That's why I'm keeping it on auto. So what else I can say? What about the ergonomy of the, of the interior of the car? I mean, there is a two cup holders. You can put your phone. You can plug in your charger in the middle central console or uh, in the middle under your radio. So there is one common problem which is always exists in the Subaru. Those screws those screws in the armrest cover they always fall apart because the car vibrating a lot so they just fell off and they inside what i have to do i just have to screw them back and probably i'm gonna put some glue so the people whoever gonna own this car after me then i'm gonna have the problem again but i don't know why it's a common problem for all the subarus whatever whatever i touch in my life so this car is nice tinted, it's tinted all around together with windshield and it gives me kind of more uh, comfy condition while I'm driving it, especially when it's, the sun is so high and it's super hot in and out. So what else I can tell you about the car when you're driving it, when I'm driving on the streets or I'm driving uh, on a freeway, Whoever gonna pass you by, they're always gonna try to race you. I don't know, from the beginning or in the middle, or maybe the car itself giving you that kind of ability. You're on a race car and everybody try to override you. So go ahead and uh, do it. Be the one, be the first. That's what's always pushing me in the Subaru. But same time, all the Hondas, Toyotas, whoever passing you by, stopping with you on the traffic light, you're gonna see that energy coming from them they just want to step on the gas but the more they want to step they want to more hear your engine they want to see you going forward and overriding them not them so they want to hear the noise of this beautiful engine that's what i'm thinking going on because any honda whoever gonna try to pass you by they know it's not gonna happen but Again, it's kind of you driving with the enemies all around you and you just want to be the first. So you just want to step on the gas and get out of them. That's super cool. And always when I'm jumping in the Subaru, especially Turbo, uh, I'm always having the same feeling about the people around me and around about myself, the way I'm driving the car. As always, like I say, when you're trying to launch, uh, this car kind of going, going down and after going up, so you have to give a little bit time for the turbo to spin so you can step on it. So there is a SE drive. It's 
it's optional for some Subarus because I did see those on the Legacy and Outback six cylinder and the Legacy, the previous one, the one comes with a uh, six speed manual transmission turbo. So it's SE drive basically that it gives you three different variations of driving performance. So it's intelligent, it's a sport mode and it's a sport hashtag. So which means sport sharp. So I'm driving in the sport mode right now and I'm going about about some speed and uh, there's a Tesla plate obviously the guy wants to race I'm not gonna race him because he has more power and the car is much faster than me but any speed on this car I'm feeling myself really comfortable uh, I know my brakes are good so I'm gonna stop the car from any speed and um, it doesn't matter I'm driving on the freeway or I'm driving on the canyon in a city it's just nice. The steering is so tight, so it feels all the bumps on the road because of the suspension tight. But same time, your steering wheel itself and the steering of the car, it just following you. So if you want to go right, you can go right like by turning the steering wheel just a little bit, and the car gonna listen to you right away. So the difference also between the STI and the WRX or, or regular Impreza, the Recon Pinion is a little bit shorter, means you're gonna turn the wheel much faster than the regular car, and you can feel it right away as soon as you're driving it. So I'm gonna keep this car for a little bit longer. Am I gonna sell it for sure? Because uh, like I say, I'm always buying, I'm always selling. Nobody can stop me just because that's my lifestyle. And Subaru, that's a huge part of my life. Style, but not just the style. It's a huge part of my life. It's somewhere deep in my heart. And I constantly gonna love this car, whatever shapes and forms it's gonna get later on because the Subaru, that's the brand what's coming to your heart and it stays there forever. Thank you so much for watching it. Please do some comments below. Please put some thumbs, subscribe. And I love you so much, guys. Thank you so much for watching it and see you next time.